Hello everybody and welcome back to this tutorial and this will be the last video before we actually start performing some different types of hacks before I tell you about different phases of penetration test this is just the last video of us getting ourselves familiarized with the Linux environment so we covered some of the basic commands we also changed our IP address and right now we're going to cover some of the remaining commands as well as some of the networking commands that we need to know so the first one is the one that we already saw. It is the ifconfig. It is used to actually check out which available uh, network adapters you have, uh, whether it is a wireless adapter or cable connection, doesn't even matter. And also to check out your IP address. As we can see, my IP address is 192.168.1.8. So that is also the command that we already saw. The next command would be to check out the IP address of your gateway. You can simply do that by just by typing netstat and then dash or dash nr. Press here enter and what this will give you is the gateway and then below the gateway you should see the IP address of your router. In my case this is 192.168.1.1. Okay, so those are the two commands used to checking out IP addresses. One more command that we already saw is pinging, so you can ping our router for example. As we can see we are going to receive the ICMP packets, uh, which is good. Another command that I didn't show you before that you should all run, that you should basically know, it's not that important but it is useful, is the cat command. Now the cat command is used to actually print out the content of a specific file. That is one of its use. So for example, let's say we go to the desktop and there we touch a file, file.txt. And let's say we actually write something to that file and we can write simply just by opening that file and typing a, b, c, d, e, f, g. Then we save that. And instead of always opening a file like this, like you open it in Windows, you can simply just print out the content of that file simply just by typing cat and then the file name, so file.txt and you can see that what uh, that uh, what is written in the file is also what is the output of our command, so a, b, c, d, e, f, g. Now, if you don't want to even write this content just by opening a file like this, you can simply write to a file from Linux terminal. So you can use the nano command and the nano command allows us to actually open something similar to a notepad just in a terminal and there we can actually write to the file whatever we want, so nano file.txt. And this is also an, a useful command and a command that you should remember because we are going to use nano a lot from now on, especially when we get to actually opening up different programs or coding our own programs, you will use nano to write your own program. So right here we can simply just delete this if we want to and we can simply just go w www and doesn't even matter what the content is in the next row we can simply just type q q q q q okay now uh, the process of actually saving this is you simply just type control or whole control and then o it will write down here file name to write file.txt we want to write it under that name so press here enter and then if you want to close this nano or this uh, text editor you can simply just type control x and it will leave out of the actual nano editor and simply just to print out the content once again you can simply just type cat file.txt and we can see that the content of the file has been changed so once again if we want to add something we simply just type nano file.txt and right here we can add e e e e e save it once again holding ctrl o press enter hold ctrl x and then cat file.txt now, uh, another command that you might be interested in is the echo command. It can also be used to actually uh, input something into a file. So if we simply just type echo and then zero, you will see that the output will be zero. If we just type echo hello world, the output will be hello world. So it simply just prints out whatever we print or whatever we put after the echo command. If we want to, for example, write hello world into a file.txt that we have created on our desktop, we can do that by uh, doing this. So watch right here, echo, hello world, 
and then you simply just use this arrow right here and then the file name. If you press here enter, the contents of the file.txt will be rewritten from those three rows of letters into hello world. So we can print it out with cat file.txt and we can see that right now in the file.txt is a sentence hello world. If you simply just do it once again, simply just by reversing, uh, let's type world hello and once again in file.txt, get file.txt, it will rewrite the hello world and it will input world hello or basically it will input anything that you have written right here. Okay, but this is only used once you actually want to rewrite something uh, into a file. If you want to append to a file, simply let's say you want to add another word right here, you can simply just nano it. So open a text editor and you can simply just type another hello right here. Control O to save, Control X to exit, and it will not rewrite the last two words that it already had. It will just simply add another word at the end. Okay, so that is also something useful. Now let me think if we did forget some of the commands, we can simply just check out this part right here. The chmo command is something that we will take a look at later on. It is used to basically give permission to a certain file. For example, this command right here, chmod plus x numbers dot py is used to, for example, give the executable uh, or to give this numbers dot py file an executable permission. Okay, but we are not going to cover that at the moment. What we are going to cover is this command apt-get, which is really important. And also, let me just see right here, the sudo command, if you are running as a simple user, would be useful. A sudo command is used to actually enter the root account, if you know the password, uh, the password to the root account, yeah, uh, you can use the sudo, but we, since we are running everything as a root user, it's really not that important to us. So what we are left to do is, I'm left to explain to you what is the apt-get command. Since in the Linux environment, you simply just have a file called sources.list and we can locate it with locate command. As we can see, it is right here in the etc apt sources.list. So let's navigate to that directory. So cd and then etc and then apt. Press here enter ls and we can see the sources.list file right here. If we nano that file, you can see there are some things written right here, okay? Now, basically, everything that starts with a hash will be ignored by the Linux computer. It will not be read once you actually try to execute a program. It is same for every type of program. For example, if you write a Python program and you start with a hash, it will be ignored, as well as this right here. And why is that important? Well, right here are links that are used to update your Kali Linux machine. So for example, as you update Windows or it is updated by default, uh, in order to update this Linux machine, you will need to run two specific commands and it will update from the links that are specified right here in this file right here. But it will only update them from the actual links that do not have a hash right here. So if it is blue, it will not be uh, used in the actual update, but it, if you remove the hash, it will be used. So by default, we only have this link right here from which we are going to download our updates. And in order to download the updates, uh, let me just leave this file, save if there is anything to save. If you change something, just make sure that you change it after you actually checked it out because if you simply just input a link uh, that is not supported by Kalinix, should I say, you might actually crash your entire computer and it will uh, give, give you some APT error, you will not be able to update and so on and so on. So it can cause you some problems. Um, the best thing you can do is simply just leave it on that. That certain link will be enough for now on and later on if we need it, we will simply just uh, interfere with that sources.list file. But for now on, I just want to show you how you can update uh, and install different updates or upgrades to your Kali Linux machine. Uh, first of all, you need to run the apt-get and then update command. What this will do is it will simply just perform the connection to the links specified in the sources.list file and it will check for uh, if there are any updates available to your Kali Linux machine. Now, if you run this for the first time in your Kali Linux machine, 
It will take some time, it will take like 30 to 40 minutes perhaps to actually finish this. Uh, not this first command, but the second command, command that we are going to run, where we actually install the updates that are available. As we can see right here, it is downloading some of the packages. And the next command will be apt-get upgrade, which will install the downloaded packages. As we can see, this finished relatively fast. It simply just downloaded some packages. And in order for us to actually install them, we can simply just type, type apt-get upgrade. It will ask you whether you want to install this or not. So these are the files that are going to be upgraded. As it says right here, the following packages will be upgraded. And then these packages right here, it doesn't really matter what they are. Uh, it says need to get 391 megabytes out of 516 megabytes of archives. After this operation, 37 megabytes of additional disk space will be used. Do you want to continue? Do you want to type here yes or why? If you don't want to continue, simply just type no, but this is something that you should finish. And what this will do is it will simply install all of the downloads that it has downloaded in the previous command. Now, this will take some time, so we'll simply just leave it right here. And as soon as it finishes, in the next video, we're going to actually start uh, performing our first hacks. Now, we will not perform the first hacks in the next video, but we are going to get familiarized with different phases of penetration test, and we are going to cover each phase one by one, starting from the first phase, which is uh, footprinting and reconnaissance, or gathering as much as information about your target as you can. So, that would be about it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope I will see you in the next one. Bye!